Okay, our study of evil. I believe this is number 18. And with I say with every study that we do in evil, you've got to get all 17. All of them. This is something you cannot nitpick. And with the state that what this world is in today, we need the study of evil. I mean, I would have never figured when we started this. I'll see if I have a date. You got to write the dates down. When we started this on January 16, 2020, January 16, 2020, I would have not assumed all the evil that we've had happen to us worldwide. Coronavirus is an evil. Coronavirus is not a sin. I believe it's a consequence of God because of man's sin. And that's evil. I believe all this rioting that's happening in America today, that is evil and it is a sin. And yet it is also an evil, a consequence, because parents... And education, educated fools and psychology has said, let's disregard the Bible and let's give them a timeout. Let's count to five. Let's give in to their having a, a, a tantrum on the floor of the store. So interesting study that we started in January. And we're up to evil versus good now not evil is good and good is evil we did that prior we're looking at there's an evil and there's a good and we're at number 16 hopefully lord willing get down to 20. we've been doing five segments and we're in jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23. and the bible says can the ethiopian change his skin Well, I believe that there was an Amer American, uh, African American by the name of Jackson that tried to change his skin. And I don't know all the details of that. I don't care. But I guarantee it's been tried. As Jesus said, can you make one hair white and one hair black? And as you can look at my beard now, you you don't see any gray. I didn't like it, so I got some men stuff and I dyed my beard, my mustache, and it's only gonna last as long as my my gray hair comes back and grows out. It's not permanent. And no, he can't change his skin. And it may not even be talking about the color of the skin because the diseases. Or a leper, his spots. A leper is covered with spots and he can't change them. He can't change the color of them. He can't. Oh, I would like this spot to be on my left paw rather than on my tail. Or, you know, this spot that I hear got, you know, above my eye. I want it over here by my. He can't do that. Then, if they could, then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. And what is, what, is, what is Jeremiah saying by the word of God? People that are just in their natural state, according to nature, do evil. It's their natural instinct. As a man is born unto woman, the troubles fly as far. We are born in sin. From the first time that Adam and Eve ate of that fruit and she conceived both children and then a third child and more children. We're born with an endemic nature of all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's only one exception to that rule and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Why is there evil? I got the perfect answer according to the Bible. 
there is evil because man disobeyed the word of God. God said, do not eat of that fruit. And the man ate of the fruit. Became a sinner. The wages of sin is death. And before we die, there is evil as a sin and there is evil as a consequence of sin. You don't have to teach a child a lie. Ask that child after doing something wrong. My brother did it. Not me. I don't know. The dog. You don't have to teach a child to steal. Tell them you cannot have the cookie to after dinner. And then you'll probably sometime in that lifetime, that little child, you'll catch that child trying to have a cookie before dinner without your knowledge. Jeremiah 42. Even saved Christians, we don't do right all the time. We sin willfully. We shouldn't. And we sin, can I say innocently? I mean, unknowing. There are sins that, oh, why did I do that? And sometimes it takes a while even to realize what we did. And there are some sins. Yeah, I'll do it. It's in our nature. It's in our heart. Jeremiah 42, verse 6. Whether it be good, whether it be evil. So evil is not good. And we talked about that before. Good is evil and evil is good. Get the, get the tapes. Get the CDs. Get the, the downloads. Get the video, get the audio. We will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we said to thee. Okay, but well, I'm looking at the first part. Whether it pleases us or pleases not, we're going to obey God's word. And a side note, they did not obey God's word. But... And the call to question was, Judah has sinned against God massively. And God had ordered Jeremiah to tell him, say, listen, just surrender to the hands of Babylon, and I'll take care of you. But you're not staying in the land. And when Jeremiah told him what God said, they said, nope. And when we got the thing is, what we have here is God is not sinning. I don't even know. I'm looking at two things. Whether, looking at the wrong one. Whether, whatever pleases us or pleases us not, we will obey God's word. And again, the evil here, we will obey God's word whether it be evil or whether it be good. All right. One verse comes for the Christian. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If you do what the Bible tells you to do, and you live right after salvation, you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ alone, and you've decided, I'm going to be a disciple, and Jesus said in, in Luke, in Luke, Chapter 14. If any man come to me and hate not his father and his mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yea, his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And Jesus said, Know not, know you not that the world hated me? John writes, Who is know ye not that, uh, that the world hates us? All right, what would be the evil of, of being a Bible-believing, serving Christian? You're going to be hated, and it's not going to feel good, and you're going to get evil. You're not going to get the promotions. You're not going to be light. You're just going to have hardship. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have the devil at your back. You're going to have the devil at your front. You're going to have the devil trying to trip you. Serving Christ properly will get you evil. 
And it will also get you good, but not in this world. <coughs> so when the word of God says, as Jeremiah 42, 6, going all the world and preach the gospel. That's good. All right. You're not going to get good on that. You're going to get people going to flip you off. They're going to slam the door in your face. They're going to yell at you. They're going to call the cops on you. Your Listen, I got my whole family hated me. Most of my whole family. Most of my family on my grandfather's side was Polish. And I talked to them or I wrote them letters or I sent them gospel tracts. And they got angry. My family got mad at me when my other grandmother was involved in open sin, though it wasn't her sin, it was the sin of her son. And, and no, I, I'm not going to have anything to do with that grandma. I, I will witness to that grandma, but I'm not going to have any part of what she's doing, which is sinning, which is wrong. And I was, you know, Mr. Terrible, Mr. And yet, before I left the before I left Florida. My wife and I got to witness to that grandmother, and then we found out that you know, she's all messed up with the Catholic religion. I don't know if she's saved or not. But if we do what the Word of God says to do, you're going to have to expect evil. Moses did everything that God told him to do. Man, it's, that guy, I can only sum it up like this with Moses. God told Moses, you're going to die. You're not going to promised land. And Moses prayed for the congregation. He says, in, in so many words, he says, God, well, someone's got to give them in the land. We need somebody to guide them. And this is how much aggravation that Moses got. And, and God said, okay, we'll call Joshua. Can you imagine that day when, when Moses went up to Joshua and said, Joshua, I'm dying. Oh, Moses. Oh, yeah, I am. And I'm dying, and you're going to take over Israel. You imagine Joshua. Uh, you mean, uh, I mean, they blamed Moses for everything. They got angry and griped and complained against Moses. And Moses did right. And we will get evil by the world and by Christians. Let me get that out there, too. I've had churches and Christians. Presently, sticking knives in me. I got things going on in my life right now with Christian. I'm looking at why. And they're doing worldly things and they're doing things against the Bible in the name of the Bible. So evil will come forth of you doing good by what the Word of God tells you to do. Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3, and we're looking at evil and good. There's a difference. Go back. You know, where evil is good and good is evil, and that was an interesting study. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 38. The Bible says, Out of the mouth the Most High, capital H, that's God, for she is not evil, and good now wait a minute wait a minute be careful god doesn't sin god is holy god's righteous god is without sin so again we're looking at a at the tone of evil evil is not always sin i said i started this Coronavirus is not an evil. It's a disease. It is not an evil where you would classify it as sin. That would not have to ever, nobody would ever have to. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We would, no one would ever have to go up to your father and say, Father, I have coronavirus. I'm sorry. Forgive me for coronavirus. That's not it. Now, coronavirus is an evil. It's the consequence of sin. And what this verse is saying was, you know, coming out of God's mouth. Oh, yeah, good comes out of God's mouth. Good, yeah, amen. 
But there's also evil that comes out of God's mouth, and God's not going to cuss. God's not going to lie. For the Bible says in four or five places, he cannot, will not, and is unable, and never to lie. And yet there was evil pronounced against Sodom and Gomorrah for their sins. God said, let the, let the fire throw. There was evil pronounced upon the sins of Job when he allowed the devil to say, okay, Satan, go, but, but stop there or stop right there. And the sins of America, the way we've raised our children, God's like, okay, let the children revolt. Let the children riot. Let the, listen, it is of the word of God. Go ahead and do it. Be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall that he shall also reap. Now, God does not sin. That's not the evil. The evil is consequences of sin. And out of the mouth comes, let it rain. Bless them with rain. It fall, rain falls upon the just and the unjust. Or the evil could be of God. Stop the rain. Just stop it. Make their heavens as brass and make the ground. There's no rain, no crops. That's what he did. That's what he did in Israel. He could also, on the other hand, say, in the time of Noah, okay, just let it rain and don't stop for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, the flood of Noah and the droughts of, of Israel are not evil. They're the consequences of evil. So when we come across Lamentation 338, out of the, mo out of the mouth of the Most High perceive not evil, that's not sin. That's God judging sin. Big difference. Big difference. Amos. Amos. Chapter 5, verse 14. Amos 5, 14. Again, we're looking at the definition of evil, and we're looking at the definition of good. They are totally opposite what we've seen. And previously, again, we've done people calling evil good, and we looked at people calling good evil. Now we're looking at the definition. In Amos chapter 5, verse 14, I'll give you a couple more minutes to, 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 to find it. Right after Joel. There is a standard of the Bible for definition that we need to get correct. Now listen, we can't run to the education system and we can't run to the media today to d define what words are. They don't even know what words are because today in the education system, in the media, the Bible is not closed. It's glued shut. And if there is somebody working for the media that's got a Bible, he, he's doing it in his own little cubicle where nobody else can see. And those that do know are probably harassing him, giving a hard time and everything. Amos chapter 5, verse 14. Seek good. Go get it. When I was a little boy, I used to play hide and seek. One boy would be up a tree, uh, up, up against a tree, up against a wall somewhere. He closed his eyes, he count to ten. Everybody go hide before he gets to ten. And when he gets to ten, he or she would turn around and try to find his friends that had hidden. Seek. Good. The Bible says, if it's good, do it. Seek good and not evil. The Bible says, seek after the good, but do not chase the evil. And that's not happening in the churches today. They are doing the evil and forsaking the good. 
Baptist churches, right? Never mind the Catholics, never mind the Presbyterian. I'm talking about Baptist churches with the King James Bible, and they're not doing the good, they're doing the evil. And it's what's worse, Lad uh, the Laodicean church age, Revelation chapter 3, they are thinking they are doing good. They are thinking they're doing the will of God. They think that God is pleased with them. They got evil for good and good for evil. They don't have the definition of evil and good. They got it backwards. And they're not pleasing God. They're upsetting God. And a Christian walk in a, in a little book well, well unknown amongst Christians, the book of Amos tells us, do the good, find the good, find it. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. Read the Bible. Devour the Bible with your eyes and ears. Never mind the TV control magazine. Never mind the gun magazine. Never mind the, the actresses and actresses life magazines. Never mind that. Even some book. Oh, I got a book about the Bible. Read the Bible. Man, those books are horrible, terrible, and worldly. Get yourself a King James 1611 Bible. Start in Genesis and go 66 books and read and study the whole thing and go back to Genesis and do it over again. That's good. Oh, I read I read this fiction book. I read this nonfiction book. You know, you know what makes me sick? There's a well popular bookstore behind us, a little bit up the way. I say I'm I'm terrible about five miles if, if that two miles I don't know, I'm terrible but there's a, there's a well famous bookstore behind us and you go in there and they, they, man they got magazines they got a whole section old magazine I can get Mad Magazine there and they got fiction and they got nonfiction and they got language books they got schooling books. And they got how-to books, and they got maps and atlases, and, and man, they got all the classics and all that. I, I, I go there, get my door, uh, uh, you know, classic books to read. They also have a religion section. And in the religion section, they have Christianity. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Christianity. You know they have in that bookstore a section of Christianity. You know they have a section Christianity fiction. You know what fiction is? It's a lie. It's evil. And yet at the bookstore you can find an evil section called Christian fiction. That's like going. That's like going down to the hardware and say, "Sir, yeah, can you tell me where your clean mud is?" My clean mud. Yeah, yeah. Or and that I need some soft bricks. I'm gonna build a house. I need soft bricks. And that's going back calling evil good and good and evil. But we've already done that. There's a well-defined. There's evil, and there's good, and we've got. We're doing 16 to 20, Lord willing, today. And we've got, and this is not all. We've got 32 under categories that we're looking right now. So we're about halfway through. And then we got other topics to do. The Bible tells us this is evil. The Bible says sodomy is an abomination of God. The world says it's okay. The Bible says that idolatry is an abomination and God is jealous and God hates it. The Roman Catholic Church and other churches say it's an aid of worship. The Bible says adultery and fornication is, is a sin. Yet Hollywood says 
uh, tickets. It'll cost twelve dollars for a ticket to go watch our movie. Christians have not identified themselves that this is evil and I ought not to be doing it. And the churches are also practicing not telling its congregation this is evil, this is sin, and this is what we're supposed to be doing, and this is good. There's a failure. Amos chapter 5, verse 15, our last one for today. So we did 14, seek good, not evil. 15, hate the evil and love the good. Oh. There are more Christians out there that love politics more than they love Jesus. And they attack me because I attack their gods. And I represent more of the Bible and Jesus and God. Christians are mad at me because I stand up more for the Bible than I do the American flag. The American flag, you cannot throw in the garbage. You have to bring it to a special group of people to, to get rid of an old, torn American flag. The Bible, you can just throw it in the garbage. The American flag, you cannot have it touch the ground. And I have seen teenagers take the Bible and slam it across the basketball court as they go to play basketball after church. I have seen Bibles leaving church on the rooftop of the cars go flying off in the gutter of the road. I have seen Bibles left in the back seat of the car the next Sunday. You have to have at night a light has to show on the American flag or it must come down. And yet there are pages like the book of Amos we're reading right now that some people's Bible, it has not ever, 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 Amos has never seen the day of light or a artificial light. You see, I got a light right here. My Amos and all 66 of the books of the Bible that I read and study throughout the year have seen light. And yet they love the evil. I love people going around the circle 400 times. And they do it on a Sunday, but they love Jesus. Why is it on a Sunday? I have heard Christians throughout my testimony since 1987 when I was saying, well, we can't go to church Wednesday night because our TV show, the semifinals are on Wednesday night. Why is it on Wednesday night? And why do you love the evil more than you love God? It's a simple command. If it's evil and the Bible says it is sin and it is evil, hate it. And yet the world tells you, oh, we ought to have love and no hate. Erase the hate. And when I stand on the street corner, and I've been standing on the street corner coming up six years, and I stand on the street corner in Daytona Beach, Florida, at the flea market, at the farmer's market, and I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, they hate me enough to hire a, a DJ, they hate me enough to get a, a stereo system, they hate me enough to call the cops, they hate me enough that we gotta get lawyers, they hate Jesus. And yet Jesus tells us not to hate them. We're to love our neighbors, we're to go and preach the gospel to them. They, the world, ain't practicing what they preach. You don't love Jesus if you try everything in your power to erase the message and try to silence the preacher that loves you enough to give you the gospel. You ought to hate the Catholic Church, but you ought to love the, the Catholics to witness to them. Now, I have an understanding of Catholics because I come from a Roman Catholic family, Polish Roman Catholic. I love the Catholics. I hate the church. There's a big difference. Most likely, and hopefully people try, but most likely you're not going to witness to the Pope and he's going to get saved. Most likely. But hey, all things are possible with God. 
I hate the mass because it's, it, it goes against what the Bible says. The Bible says it's an abomination to eat blood. And when you ask a Catholic, are you eating and drinking the literal body and blood of Jesus and their catechism? I grew up in it. Yes, that's evil. So what do we find today? We find in Jeremiah 13, 23, it is our basic instinct to do evil. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Why did, why did, he, why did he do this? It's his endemic nature. That's why he did it. And then, if we're going to do what God says to do, Jeremiah 42, 6, in this world, we might get evil coming back to us. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're going to get evil. We're going to get good at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to get crowns and inheritance. But you're not really going to get so good down here. I mean, people will pat you on the back. People will shake your hand. People will encourage you. Yeah, that happens. And then we have an evil that comes out of the mouth of God. Lamentations 3.38. And it's not a sin. It's God saying, judge them. You want to smoke cigarettes? Doctor? Yes, Lord. Tell them they got lung cancer. I'm telling you, you got lung cancer. That come out of the mouth of God to put that cancer in your lungs for the smoking. The, 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 the man that, that consumes alcohol, that's a sin too much. And God pronounces out of his mouth, your family's ruined. Your job is ruined. Your body and health is ruined. So that's not a sin. That's judgment. And then Amos 5.14 says, Seek good, not evil. And you're only going to find the good between the pages of Genesis to Revelation. And I have people all the time, you know, well, what's the Bible say about tattoos? Well, in the law, God said you're not to print marks upon your body. We're not under the law. Yeah, but the law is a school teacher say that's what God thinks about it. And if you look at the history of tattooing, it was doing it for the dead. Are we to worship the dead? No. And then finally, Amos 5.15. Hate the evil and love the good. And the world and the media and television and churches today are completely opposite of what that is. Any church you walk into and they got statues and they or they got pictures of their founders. That's evil. The Bible says it's evil. So that's our study of evil and good today. This is this is number 18. Go back and get 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. May the rapture happen. This is all the word of God. I haven't gone into any tradition. Oh. Tomorrow, Lord willing, we have our Bible study in the park, the Gospel of John. Lord willing, be uh, Moses and Elijah. That will be uh, recorded and put out to the internet later on Friday or Saturday. And then pray for us Saturday. Last week, even though it was a rain, it rained out. They had a DJ there. So that does cause us trouble, aggravates my flesh. <laughs> Pray for me with that. Pray we can get the gospel out and, and serve the Lord. And that message will be later on Saturday too. So keep the Hayward Family Ministries in your prayer. 
Pray, I got coming up in an uh, ear surgery. Pray that God will, uh, I want a wife. I want the Lord to send me a woman to become my wife. There's Bible restrictions. Got to follow the Bible. And may, Lord, may the Lord God bless his family with one more member we need and one more member that I need to help me from the Lord. So if you please keep that in prayer. And these videos, share them, like them, subscribe, download and put CD, whatever you do with computer, whatever you can do with it today and give them to your friends and, and enemies and all that. These messages, God knows what it said. So if these messages are cut and spliced and used against me. Well, God knows what I said. And many people who have heard these videos know what I said. And you'll stand against God in error. But there's no copyright. Free will to do in the glory of God the Father and Jesus Christ.